Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom. Thank you for joining us for the seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 37 of our trek and in honor of Independence Day in the United States. Friday we started a five day series of episodes where we are going to consult one of our founding fathers in the United States, Benjamin Franklin, who is known for his wisdom and practical sage advice. Today we are recording our podcast in our studios from the Big House in Marriott, Ohio. We are looking forward to being back at home, too, for about 12 days to be working on some projects there before returning to the Big House in mid-July for a little over three weeks. We have a lot planned for the remainder of this summer, and my hope is that you are living your life to the fullest also. Regardless of what you may have planned, make sure that you plan to enjoy every moment. Life slips by all too quickly for us, and make sure that you plan to listen to a wisdom track. We would appreciate that. And on our trek today, we finish up the examination of our 85 practical tips written by Benjamin Franklin called The Way to Wealth. In order to keep the daily wisdom trek to near 7 to 8 minute length, I did split up the remaining tips over a few days, so it was one day longer than what I originally expected. I hope that you don't mind, and we want to keep our wisdom nuggets short and digestible. So let's venture on our trail today as we examine steps 72 through 85. These are nuggets of truth and wisdom, and if consumed regularly, are like nutritional supplements, which will enhance the body and the mind. This will allow us to live in such a manner that we will be creating a living legacy each day. So let's jump right in. Step number 72. Lion rides upon the debt's back. As we think about our hiking analogy, debt becomes a heavy backpack. But instead of the backpack being filled with essential gear needed to make our trek both safe and enjoyable, it is filled with useless items and rocks that weigh us down, with providing little benefit. We then have to lie to ourselves and justify the burdensome life that we have chosen when we decide to borrow needlessly. Number 73. Tis hard for an empty bag to stand upright. Now, if your life is an empty shell without value and substance, then it is difficult to stand strong when the winds of life blow. We need to have a strong internal moral compass, a compass or a code of values that we live by. We must have integrity that we never compromise. As mentioned in Proverbs 10.9, people with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. Number 74. Creditors have better memories than debtors. If you borrow money, never lie to yourself that you won't have to pay it back or that the loan somehow will be mysteriously forgiven. Although we may conveniently forget, those that loan us money will not. Number 75. The borrower is a slave to the lender, the debtor to the creditor. No, Ben took this one straight from the Bible. Anytime you put yourself into subjection of another person or organization, for any purpose, you volunteer to become their slave or their bondservant. To my knowledge, no one can ever force you to borrow money. You may feel that you have no choice, but that is one of the lies that we tell ourselves. We may choose to borrow, or we can choose to radically change our lives to a new paradigm and not borrow money. Proverbs 22.7 says, Just as the rich rule over the poor, so the borrower is a servant to the lender. And this is so true. Number 76. Disdain the chain, preserve your freedom, and maintain your independency. Be industrious and free, be frugal and free. Now in this saying from Ben, debt becomes a chain that binds us so that we are no longer free. To be free, to remain independent, work a lot and spend a little. There is no alternative. Number 77. Poverty often deprives a man of all spirit and virtue. Now poverty is often more of a mindset than a reality. You can have very little, as far as material means, and yet be vibrant and alive. If you are in poverty, especially if it's from your own doing, then it will drain you of your dignity and strength. The good news is that no one needs to remain in this state. Today can be the beginning of a new way of living. Number 78. Creditors are a superstitious sect, great observers of set days and times. Now, if you've ever been in financial trouble, you'll know all too well that creditors never forget what day it is. When it's time to collect, they never miss a deadline. Number 79. Those have a short Lent who owe money to be paid at Easter. Now, when you know a payment is coming due and you do not have the money to make the payment, It is hard to enjoy the seasons of life. So start the change today so when times of celebration do come, you can choose to enjoy them without all the burdens. Number 80. For age and want, save while you may, no morning sun lasts the whole day. Now one principle that is lost on many in today's society in both business and personal life is neither the good times nor the bad will last forever. If you do have a prosperous season in life, save back some of that gain because difficult times will come and you will need that reserve. Life is like the seasons of the year. It will go through cycles, so make sure that you're prepared. Number 81. Gain may be temporary and uncertain, but ever while you live, expense is constant and certain. This ties back to number 80, but you will have times of plenty and of want. 
prepared during the times of plenty so that you can survive the times of want. Then you can rest with ease, knowing that you will survive without too much difficulty. Number 82. Tis easier to build two chimneys than to keep one in fuel. Building something has a start and an end date, and usually a fixed cost. Too many times we do not count the ongoing cost of what we spend. I have seen many a person buy a house because they could afford the payment, but as soon as ongoing maintenance starts, then they can no longer afford to maintain it. They become slave to what they purchased. Number 83. Rather go to bed supperless than rise in debt. We need to be willing to sacrifice today so that we can have a better and more solid tomorrow. Easy credit has tainted our knowledge into thinking that we need to have everything now. Don't fall into that trap. Number 84. Get what you can and what you get hold. Tis the stone that will turn all the lead into gold. Now this saying is in reference to the alchemist in the Middle Ages that used to think there was some kind of stone that could turn lead into gold. It was the imaginary philosopher's stone. But for practical application, it means work hard today accumulating the stones in life, which are of little value, and then hold on to those stones over a long period of time. Even the smallest amount saved will start the accumulation of wealth slowly. With time, the stones that you have worked so hard to collect will end up being your gold. And our final one of Ben's sayings is number 85. Money has never made man happy, nor will it. There is nothing in its nature to produce happiness. The more of it one has, the more you want. Now our happiness and satisfaction in life will never come from money, nor the things that money can buy. That is why it is not wise to go into debt to purchase stuff. Money in itself is not the problem, it is our focus on money. Money gives us choices. Money allows us to have a greater impact on our world for good. But borrowed money provides neither, as illustrated in 1 Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered off from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrow. Hope you enjoyed the last few days of our sayings as we covered The Way of Wealth by Benjamin Franklin. And that will finish our podcast for today. And if you missed any of the previous episodes in this series, please go back and check them. Or if you missed any episodes at all from Wisdom Trek, they're available on iTunes, Stitcher, or at wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow we'll start a two-day series about how to discover the secret sauce of success. And I have to tell you, that sauce is not found at McDonald's or Burger King. So please check in our camp tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And if you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, I encourage each of you to help us out in the following four ways. Please leave us feedback on the podcast at wisdom-trek.com. I'd appreciate that. Number two, if you've not done so already, please subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher so that Wisdom Truck will be downloaded to you automatically each day. Number three, if you have previously left us a rating, I do thank you for that. But if not, go to iTunes or Stitcher. I'd certainly appreciate your feedback and it'll help us to gain exposure for other listeners. And then number four, spread the word to everyone you know to join us on our Wisdom Trek. I thank you for allowing me to serve you in this way. The journal for this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com where we have pictures, sayings, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy the journey, and to create a great day. See you tomorrow.